This is a low resolution, out west, country edition of Taboo. It's a John Ford epic. It's the first Taboo of the 90s. It's Taboo 8. <laughs> All right, 1990, on the dot. This picture was 72 minutes long. We got it down to 22. That is a lot. <laughs> For a film that's 72 minutes long, to have 22 minutes of storytelling, love it. I feel like I say the words exposition and narrative way too much. So we're just gonna say 22 minutes of storytelling. I feel like we've talked about this two or three times since its release. And that is because Richard Mailer wrote it with Raven Touchstone. Richard and Raven came up with the story. Raven did the screenplay, but Richard also EP, executive producer. Henry Pichard directed this film. I love his name. And he starred in this. Don't you be hugging me, I'm not your friend. My favorite performance of all time non-adult role. He's in no adult scenes, although that would have been hilarious. This dude literally says to him, you'll be hearing from me, I won't be listening. You'll be hearing from me, Chris. I won't be listening. I'm stealing that. I am stealing that. I've already talked about this. Anna shouldn't post this. One of the best character actors I've ever seen. Don't be hugging me. Get off my land. I'm not your friend. It's the one man army, it's on. I'm the one man on me, a son. Grumpy old Chris Thomas. I never been taken out. Sam is Randy West, and Chris is Henry Pichard. I don't want anything from you, Sam. Underneath them, we have Joey Silvera and Mike Horner. Mike Horner, no comedy. We were just talking about this. I think it's on tape. I was joking, it didn't make the cut, but I was talking about, have we ever seen a non-comedic performance from this dude? And my answer, my question, was answered a couple days later. My corner does awesome in this. Sonny McKay plays Sonny, Peter North. We also have Jenna Fine and Rachel Ashley. Michelle Monroe plays Olivia and a bunch I didn't name. This is an ensemble. Are you talking, are you kidding me? This is Taboo 8, Henry Pichard and Richard Mailer. This is the Titans. And it's the 90s. They're showing all these kids what time it is. They're like, boys, we got it like a decade and a half behind us. This is how it's done. They're doing something. They're doing something with horses. They're teaching uh, the youth, young ladies, how to rope and ride. I don't know what they're doing. Let's just watch, let's watch Tabby Late, 1990, Henry Pichard, Richard Mailer. Welcome to our series, G-rated adult films. Enjoy, or don't. Sad state of affairs when a man finally finds a woman to love and then loses her because of one foolish indiscretion. I wonder if Frank and Sonny read about it in the papers. No, they're not the type to read those scandal sheets. Besides, Sonny's too young. How old is she now? She was only five or six when I visited them in Australia. She must be 12 or so by now. Frank looks now. Older, I guess, like me. He's my brother, but I hardly know him. Half brother, really. But I hate the term half brother. We come from the same womb. He's my brother. Hey, Frank around. Daddy, there's someone looking for you. Daddy, you're Sonny. 
Uncle Dalton? You're awful big for 12. 12? Don't be kidding. I'm of age now. Yeah, I should say so. Uh, horse needs a little gas. Where can I get it? Doesn't need gas. Well, he had a little gas in the way. Dalton? Hey, Frank. How you doing? Great, mate. Hey, good to see you. Thanks hmm. for coming down, Dalton. Good thing. I didn't want to leave Sonny alone, you know, uh, while I'm away. She hasn't been here very long. Uncle Dalton, where's your luggage? Uh, driver's bringing it down. I rented this here horse in Burbank. Decided to get the feel for the old West. You know, man and his horse, grist to the mills. You planning your next book? Something like that. Chris, I think I've been fair with you. Now, what do you want, more power? Fine, I'll make you a partner in this venture, huh? I don't want anything from you, Sam. You go on, you build your condos any way you want to do. I do not want to participate in it. You just leave me alone. Chris, you know I can't build nothing until you sell me this land. Now, what'll it take? Nothing. I've told you for the hundredth time I don't want your money. It's not for sale. You'd best get off my ranch, Sam. Now, Chris, you gotta listen to reason. Don't you be hugging me. I'm not your friend. Chris, Chris, I want you to meet my brother. He's going to be in filling in for me. Chris Thomas, Dalton Leash. Dalton Leash, the writer? Yeah, that's right. I read about you in the, the papers. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> You'll be here for me, Chris. I won't be listening. Sonny, why don't you take your Uncle Dalton and show him around? I've got things to wrap up with Chris before I go. Sure, Daddy. See you later. You'd best keep him off my land. He's made me some crazy proposition about buying up all my property, putting up condominiums. What would I do with the animals? The man's not well in the head. I think he's sick. You keep him off. What was that all about? Sam Marshall owns all of the land around here, all except this ranch. It's been in Chris's family since the 40s, when Chris's father started the riding academy here. It's all Chris has got, and he's not about to let it go. That's Kai Jackson, the trainer here. Kai Jackson? Champion calf roper? What's he doing working here at the academy? Kai! I'm ready for my riding lesson. Pay attention, Kai. You might miss something. Like what? Like this might be your lucky day. Sam Marshall would like to see you. Sam Marshall? He owns half the county. How do you know him? You like him? Told you, Uncle Dalton. I hardly know him. Surely you've met some boys since you've been here. A nice, pretty, refreshing girl like you. Mm -hmm. You must have somebody knocking at your door. Well, there is one boy. Sleep. He's a ranch hand here. He's a cowboy. Born and raised around horses. And he's really quite sweet. But there's nothing serious between us. He's just someone to spend some time with. You know what I mean? Take good care of her for me, Dalton. She's all I've got, you know. Don't worry, Frank. I'll keep her safe and happy. You can count on that. You would? 
Why? Because you're the nicest little woman I've ever known. I'm going to make myself some money, take you away from here. Find ourselves a nice spread, have some little buckaroos running around there out in the dirt. Will you wait for me, Sonny? You're so sweet, sweet. I'm deeply flattered, but nobody waits for a cowboy. And besides, I don't want any little buckaroos. Little kangaroos? Just take care of yourself. I'll never forget you, Sonny. Look, it's not much, but I got hurt. Can't rodeo anymore. Got to make a living somehow. Let me ask you something, Kai. If you had all the money you wanted, what would you do? Get a ranch somewhere. And live like a man again. It's done. I'll stake you to whatever you need if you just do one little job for me. What kind of job? I need to shut down Chris Thomas. You see, I'm gonna put up a country club and a golf course on my land. I need his land to put up my condos. Make him an offer. Hell, I made him a dozen offers. He won't budge. I need you to go down there and stir up a little trouble. Not the serious, you understand, but... Uh, just go down and make a nuisance enough so them girls of his will quit the academy and he'll have to shut down. So what happened? Are you going to do the job for Sam? I'm thinking on it. Thinking about what? Staying here and teaching rich little girls how to ride? I know you're better than that, Kai. What's it to you? Sam wants this place. I want Sam to be happy. When Sam's happy, everybody's happy. I know you want to see me. Yes. Is it true? Some of it. You got a problem with Are you accusing me of something? I just hope you're not one of those intellectual types that think they're above the laws of man. Not on my ranch. I get the message, Pop. Condominiums. Tell me what's going on Somebody around here. Somebody roached our horses' mane. Roached them and cut them with pinking shoes. No, we can't even take our horses into the competition. My daddy paid a lot of money to get me ready for this season, and he's going to pull me out. 
down no, there. No, we won't. I'll talk to your daddy. What about her, Uncle? He didn't do anything. What about yeah, shouldn't we get rid of him? What for? He wasn't even around here when all this happened. Please, he was no, with me in Lancaster. Now, you girls get on out of here. Let me get to the bottom of this. Oh, get, get, get out of here. Good God Almighty. Pinky shoes. <laughs> I asked you to put Chris Thomas out of business and you try to do it with pinking shears? Who the hell you think you are, Coco Chanel? Don't knock it, Sam. It almost worked. Almost don't count. You know what I see when I look over this land? I see condos overlooking a golf course. I see a country club full of happy people, money just coming out of their pockets. But I can't make those people happy because I can't build the golf course, so I own all the land down there. Now, Olivia's working her end of it. I want you to work on something else. What happened? I'll just get in here. This place is getting tackier every day. And that's not all. Where do you guys see this? How are we supposed to work with this kind of equipment? It's not safe here anymore. I'm going to Beverly Woods. Anyone want to come with me? I do, but I don't think my mom will go for it. How about you, Janet? Well, my dad really likes Chris, but maybe I'll bring him here and show him how things are falling apart. Olivia works on that angle. I want you to come up with something else. Get Sunny on tape. I can't do it to her. Sure you can. What happens to it afterwards? Sam shows the tape to Chris. Sam buys him out. Sam burns the tape. Sam wants it. Now. Pretty face. Okay, yeah, now. She looks surprised now. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Take a sunny. Why do you work for him? A girl like you. You have everything you want. Rich parents? Theirs belongs to them. If they give me their money, I have to do what they want. If I get Sam's, I do what I want. 
What are you looking at? I've never seen a writer before. What do you write about? People. Whatever it is, Sam, the answer is no, I'm not interested. Get off my land. I don't have time for the likes of you. I got things I have to attend to. It's my final offer, Chris. Get off my land, Sam. so young anymore. My back's getting tired. I figured I'd take the money, buy myself a rent someplace. But you couldn't do it, right? I did it. I held my horse back just enough to throw my time off. Thing was, threw my horse off too. He tripped. Fell. Broke his leg. Broke my hip. The doctors wound up with all the money. And your horse? I had to put him down. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. I haven't always been smart. But I'm learning. Thanks for everything, Dalton. Take care. Stay in touch. I will, brother. When the season's over, uh, I'd like Sonny to come down and spend a couple of weeks with you. Get to know how the city folk live. Would you like that? I'd love it. Can Kai come too? Uh, we'll see. Come on, baby. Stinks. All right. What did you think? I don't care. Talk amongst yourselves. I loved this movie. I've already done, talked for 18 minutes. 
I'm not going to do an outro. My outro is going to be formed with the outtakes from the intro. I'm letting you guys total peek behind the curtain. True, 100% transparency, barefoot and independent. I should just segue into, hello, this is Jason. Welcome to I Shouldn't Post This, episode 71. How y'all doing? What are you listening to? What do you love and what do you hate? I haven't cut to Honey Wilder saying what in so long. Why? What? 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 Huh? Huh? Ah. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. I don't care. She's just so depressed in therapy. I don't care. I already said the story credit, right? Raven and Richard, and then they both went off to do their own job as well. EP, screenwriter, story by Richard and Raven, but Richard also EP executive producer. So depending on the hierarchy of this set, Richard Naylor could have been the number one of the totem pole, being the executive producer. All sets are different. I've seen that the tippy top is this, this, or this. Mostly director, producer, executive producer. But uh, so depending on the hierarchy of their set, I don't know. I would hi I would guess it's Henri Pichard, but it could have been Richard Baylor. A lot of sabotage, getting evidence on videotape. She's got a VHS tape. You know what he does? Hey man, hold up that VHS tape. Oh, you see the shadow? I want you to start on that VHS tape shadow and then pull out to relieve, relieve, reveal me and my VHS with my espionage, kind of espionage, sabotage. I keep saying words incorrectly. This was X-rated, we got it down to G. I feel like I need to think of new ways to say that. I'm getting bored with myself. It was X-rated, now it's rated G. You'll be hearing from me, I won't be listening. He also says, get off my land, numerous times. This is up there with John Doe, saying get out of my chair. I'm gonna write a book, it's gonna be called Get out of my chair and get off my land. Hmm. The story of a half Swedish, half Native American artist. Oh, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right. I think anyone will buy that as half commentary, half comedy. Power through, homie. Power through. <laughs>